So a mental health nursing assistant with the name Amy Hatfield was just recently sentenced to over 10 years in prison for being part of the UK's biggest prison drug smuggling rig together with over 17 other people. Guys, when you listen to the details of this story, you're going to think it's a movie. I was shocked. If you want to know more about this story, if you want to pick a few lessons, then stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome once again to my channel. My name is Anel Griselda. This is a series on my channel called Struck Off, where we discuss things that health professionals did that put them in trouble, or things that health professionals did that nearly put them in trouble. We'll look at their stories and then we'll pick a few lessons from these stories. So today's episode features the beautiful Amy Hatfield. Some sources says she's 37, others says she's 38. So let's just say she's 37. So Amy Hatfield, beautiful lady she was working at south yorkshire jail okay so she was employed apparently to work as a mental health support worker in the jail and she's been working there for a while amy hatfield fortunately in this case unfortunately fell in love with a prison inmate known as joseph whittenham and obviously this is strictly forbidden this is against the rules and the policies i don't know why amy let herself into falling in love with a prison inmate and he is 35 years old so obviously amy is older than joseph and i'm not sure exactly why joseph whittingham was in jail but he apparently started a sexual relationship with amy hatfield in the prison wrong move i have a feeling that joseph whittingham had all this planned i had a feeling that he actually intentionally or lured um, amy into falling in love with him for all this to happen so apparently when he started a sexual relationship then he lured amy hatfield into smuggling things into the prison for him where he would also sell make profits pay amy her share and then keep the rest of the money for him as to when he is released from prison okay so the relationship was apparently quite strong they were even exchanged changing you know photos and all that because he was apparently using an illegal phone while I was in the prison so this is how it happened you know although whenever you're visiting a prison i've interviewed a nurse here on the channel before scholastica who got the opportunity to work in a prison for one shift we know that because of the risk involved the pay is quite high and then she obviously mentioned that the place was quite strict the atmosphere was quite tense you will be searched you know before you enter the prison before you enter did they did they do any checks yes when i got to the main gates there was like a big station just for security alone. So you have to present your ID card, then they will do like this their screening. After doing that, they will give you like a thumb print something for you to thumb print. I don't even know what all these machines are called, but you put your finger and then you try to like press it in, they'll get it. You'll look through the camera, they'll take your, your yeah. eye scan just to enter inside. And then you have to pass a big door. That door was very annoying. Because every time you go through the door, it will look as if the thing wants to pierce you. <laughs> every time you go through that door, it's like it's just going round. So you go inside before you enter. And then when you even enter, it's like before you enter each door, before you enter each room, you have to go through security scanning. Wow. Yeah. So obviously Amy Hartford was always said when she was coming to work inside but she realized that there was sort of like a loophole or there was a breach in the whole security system. This is because she realized that anytime she goes back to her car to pick let's say her lunchbox in the middle of the day to eat she noticed that she was not searched again and then she took advantage of that. She abused that. So that was a time that she used to bring in things contraband. Some of the things that she brought in included knives. Can you imagine why would you give a knife to a, a prison inmate? She also brought a illegal drug called spice i'll talk more about the spice later and then other illicit drugs steroids tobacco cannabis mobile phones chargers everything that is illegal that is not supposed to be in the prison amy hatfield smuggled some of these things into the prison for his lover to use and also to sell some and get money so apparently any time that um, amy hatfield sends things in she gets paid one thousand pounds anytime she does that on this particular day when amy was caught i'm going to show the footage of her you know driving to work and then she picked her lunchbox she picked her a couple of stuff and then i think she thought she was not going to be searched but unfortunately she was searched and when she realized she had been caught she, she confessed to having some stuff on her
and they saw the things that she was carrying ladies and gentlemen i'm going to leave a picture of it here these are some of the things so obviously you see what looks like a lunch box or a lunch bag which also has illegal stuff and then she also had bottles of ribena and you know other drugs but also don't know ribena is a popular you know drink okay and then what is in this bottle is not really ribena what is in is the liquid spice that i mentioned earlier honestly when i saw the article as well when i was reading the details of the story i also did not know what spice is is it spice for cooking or what spice is it so apparently this spice is not a single drug it's a range of laboratory made chemicals that mimics the effect of tetrahydrocannabinol okay the main psychoactive component of cannabis so it's a bit similar to cannabis but it is not a single drug it has that chemicals fused together research suggests that spice and other forms of synthetic cannabis are capable of producing much more intense and prolonged effects and much lower doses than the natural cannabis so obviously they said that they put a lot of chemicals together and then it mimics the effects that cannabis gives you but the effect that it gives you it's more prolonged and then even with a little dose of this spice you get a much higher and much intense effects than taking the cannabis so obviously for people in the prison where they don't have the luxury of getting these things often you know a little will go a long way for them keep them high for a very long time even with a little dose and this is what she had on her and when you check the street value of these items or the streets for those who are outside all these illegal things are sold about 10 times higher their normal price so let's say a cup of spice is 10 pounds on the street in the prison it is sold for 100 pounds or even more so when they check the stuff that amy hadfield had in her possession that day when she was caught it was about one million pounds worth of illegal stuff with drugs and everything else that she had on her so obviously they seized her phone and other things and then they started tracking the other people so it was amy's arrest that led to them unraveling you know the whole criminal network apparently there was a huge network you know lots of people were involved family members of other inmates you know there were footage of some that were even caught later when they were monitoring them after Amy had been caught. They searched the cells of these inmates who were involved. You know, they checked the chats of Amy with some of the other inmates and then they noticed what was going on. And apparently over 17 other people were, you know, discovered. This was a huge rig. Uh, phone took out of his bathroom, mate. Oh, no, you just took it out of your bathroom, mate. It's on camera, like you told us already. What for? What? What do you think for? What for? I don't know. Tell me what you're coming for every day. Suspicions that we've got a phone. A what? A phone again. Every day, Bush. I have not got a phone in the f***ing pad. Leave me! On the 19th of October, iPhone found in Whittingham cell. Uncompliant with staff. Taking sticky tape off. It was sellotaped to the heating pipe. So this video is proudly sponsored by Lemfi. Yes, Lemfi. You can send money using Lemfi if you're in the UK, Canada, or the US to about 10 different African countries with no transfer charges. Absolutely no transfer charges. And it's a known fact that Lemfi has the best rates when it comes to transferring money. With Lemfi, you actually get value for your money. And the person gets the money almost immediately when you send it. You can send money from the UK, Canada, or the US using Lemfi to Ghana, Nigeria, Benin, Tanzania, Rwanda, Cameroon, Senegal, Ivory Coast with zero fees. Honestly, zero fees. Ever since I discovered it, that's what myself and my family have been using and it's been very reliable. I've never had any issues with it. And even if you should have any issues, your customer support is going to sort out your issues immediately. You can download Lemfi whether you use an Android, whether you use an iOS with a link in the description. And for your first transfer above £100, if you use the referral code NANEL, you get 10% of the money you're transferring back. Yes, 10% cash back. So when you say £100, you get £10 back. When you say £200, you get £20 and even after that you can generate your own referral code and you know share with your friends and family your group chats and then anytime somebody uses your code you get a referral bonus as well yes so don't forget to send money using my referral code okay thank you so much lem5 for sponsoring today's video so the whole investigation began way back in 2019 and it was just recently that the whole thing came to an end so she pleaded guilty her charges were let me read conspiracy to supply class b drugs two counts of conspiracy to convey list a article so example of a list a article is knife 
you know, and then conspiracy to convey Les B articles into the prison. Example of a Les B article is a needle, you know, that they use the syringes and stuff to inject some of these drugs, okay? And then money laundering as well, because she was, you know, smuggling the money that her lover got from selling these things back into town where she was keeping some for him as well as she having her thousand pounds for every trip that she did. After the whole investigation went deep, they realized that some of the ways that they were using to smuggle some of these things included the use of drones. Can you imagine? They also catapulting packages over the perimeter of the prison. Can you imagine? Using fake legal privilege mails and then those visiting inmates socially. intercepting inmates visiting appointment they'll intercept your visiting appointment let's say you have a hospital appointment and then they'll intercept and then they'll sneak something to you so by the time you come back it will be on you you know they had a whole lot of ways that they were smuggling with the fake legal privilege mails as well sometimes um you know when people receive mails it says strictly you know confidential you know nobody is supposed to know so they were actually faking some of these legal privilege mails and then sneaking some of these things inside that was how big the rig is and this was going on for quite a while and there's even an instance where one inmate um died this inmate was apparently bullied into tasting or trying the spice i'm, I'm not sure this inmate was used to it and probably had an overdose of it and this inmate died when they did their toxicology you know investigations they realized that the exact spice that was recovered matched the batch that was on amy hatfield okay so it was definitely part of amy's supply that killed this gentleman okay and then there's a story of another inmate who was in coma for a while and then later he lost his sight and then he's lost the use of his legs all through you know trying this spice what do you think about amy's predicament now she's in prison for over 10 years if she was to be in america she'd probably have more jail time and all these other people who have been unraveled all because Amy was initially caught and then they did the investigation and they noticed there was a huge rig. All these people have also been jailed. What do you think of the whole story? To me, the moral lesson is that, um, you know, as for my gender, as for our gender, sometimes some of us, not me, some of my gender people, when they fall in love, they forget to use their brains. And then this particular story is a perfect example of what we call hybristophilia high bristophilia so for those who are hearing it for the first time it's derived from a greek word meaning to perpetuate an outrage against another it's defined as the phenomenon of an individual being sexually aroused by a criminal offender some women are like that they see criminal offenders and then they are sexually attracted to them it's strange isn't it funny enough it's most commonly noticed among my gender people it's not as common in males there was this crime documentary i was watching and then there was a serial killer who was popularly known in america who was arrested and when this serial killer was arrested and in jail awaiting his death sentence or something like that lots of girls were writing him love letters sending him nude photos they were crazy about him this was somebody who was taking lives okay this is a perfect example of hybristophilia amy hatfield being older than joseph fell in love probably with his you know thug looks and whatever and i think that was the point when she knew she had fallen in love it with the prison inmates when she's not supposed to that was when she should have quit the job in fact there are so many care jobs awaiting you if you're in such a situation you're in a place where you know you're not supposed to fall for your patient but through some weird means you're falling in love with your patient quit leave the job there are so many other jobs go to another branch come to a care home go to a hospital okay do not let yourself be led into this we don't even know if Joseph loved her for sure. He was probably just using her and it happens. Okay, so please, if you find yourself in any situation as a health worker where you know you are mm, likely to break the rules through some of these things because you have love, I think you should just quit. Okay, see, even if you love somebody, you should not smuggle illegal things to them because they can harm other people with it. And now you've lost over 10 years of your life. You've been embarrassed. Now everybody watching me knows your name and has seen your face. So this is another episode of Struck Off. I hope you learned something from it. What do you think? Do you think the jail time was enough? Do you think it was not enough? Do you think Joseph was probably only using her or you think it's possible they fell in love let me know your comments okay and let me know if you had any other lessons that you learned from this that i did not mention thank you so much for watching bye